where in the world have you been all week? Now, if you watch very often, you know that that's the way I usually open up these tremendous times together on Wednesday evening. And the reason I say it is because I've been waiting all week to get right here. And I'm so thrilled that you're taking time right now, whether you're viewing live right now, which of course is the very best, but if circumstances have made it impossible for you to do that, you're watching later, guess what? The same anointing, the same glory, the same blessing, the same anointed word of God is going to touch you just like it did when we were live, which is where we are right now, unless you're watching it later than this was earlier. We love you so much. We're so thankful for you. We're just believing for God's absolute best for you. You know, for a long time, I, I grew up in the church, you know. I answered the call to full-time gospel ministry when I was 17 years old. That was a while ago. Uh, in two years, it'll be 50 years ago. And so I answered that call, but I've been raised in the church my whole life. Folks say I cut my teeth on the back of a church pew. Well, I certainly did. And I thank God for parents, you know, a mom, a dad, both in the home, both working to make a great Christian family. And I'm so thankful for that today. I need you to go back and look on my Instagram from a few days ago, a post that I put up with my powerfully anointed daughter, Ashton Blair, where she spoke exactly to the subject of posterity. You know, it's not just about us, it's about those coming after us. And you, in the spiritual sense, are my posterity. I'm so thankful for you. You're like a sponge, you know. I come in here and that little red light goes on and I feel you. I begin to experience, you know, Jesus said, who touched me? And they said, well, everybody's touching you. And Jesus said, no, no, no. There's a difference in somebody touching me and somebody touching me. And that anointing, he said, I perceive that virtue, that power has gone forth from me. He was talking about that anointing. He was, after all, Jesus Christ, right? The anointed one, Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. So he was not diminished nor depleted because there was a release of the anointing to meet that need. In fact, God himself is a self-generating entity. What does that mean? He no needs nothing but himself to exist because when he exerts energy, that feeds his energy. So it just is cyclical and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and better and better, stronger and stronger. That's the reason this book says, the path of the righteous, that's going to grow brighter and brighter, not dimmer and dimmer. When the Lord God was healing me of vocal cord cancer, two silent years of my life, I remember going over that over and over again. I would pray that two or three times a day, every day. The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter because it had gone off in my spirit that brighter and brighter is better and better. And if it stands true in the spiritual realm, it stands true in the natural realm, and it stands true in the physical realm. So what does that mean? I'm getting better and better. I'm getting stronger and stronger. The enemy's stranglehold, literally, on my vocal cords was getting less and less and less. And that's what I'm believing for you right now. Now, as always, I open up with a word for you and I want you to comment. I need you to like and I need you to share. Let me pause right there. Tonight is not an ordinary night. Tonight is an extra 
extraordinary night, an extraordinary night. You know, we never really, truly, I don't believe, recognize and honor true spiritual greatness while it is among us. There's too much competition, you know. Some Bishop T.D. Jakes told me once, he said, we may, we may be the two people most in this nation where the other ones are just nipping at our heels all the time and we know they're there. Well, that, that's, that's rather true. We never really recognize true spiritual giants while they're among us. We all want to throw flowers when they're gone. Well, tonight you are going to hear from one of the final and foremost generals of our faith still alive on the earth today. He's over 80 years of age, but he is not weak. He's stronger than ever, more anointed than ever, more of the holy presence of God upon him forever. And I've known him for over 30 years. And you are going to be unbelievably blessed. So I want you right now to let everybody you know, know that one of the last living generals of the previous generation is going to be in my seat in just a few moments, and he is going to break the seals on God's Word, and you are going to be so radically changed that when you look in the mirror to brush your teeth tonight, you're going to wonder who that is staring back at you. So, Share with everybody. Let's break every record we've ever had. Let all your friends know. Text them, email them, share, like, comment, because he's an audience participation preacher too. And if you stop commenting, he may stop talking. I want you to know that we love you. Get yourself ready. Get a notepad, get a pen, get a paper, get your cell phone ready. If you're not watching on your cell phone, get your laptop ready to go. If you're watching on your television, you're going to want to get every single nugget of gold that he's going to drop on you tonight. Now, if you have never left me your email address, you need to do that because I have got one of the mightiest, you know, something, it doesn't take a lot of dynamite to dislodge a mountain. And a lot of you have mountains in your life, so I'm going to give you a stick of dynamite to move it out of the way. It's called War of Words. Let me get it so you can see it. There we go. War of Words. What does that mean? That means every battle is won or lost in the arena of your authority. Author, root word of authority. What does that mean? That means you win or lose. The power of life and death is in your tongue. James said, the tongue of all the members of your body is the hardest to tame. He said, we put bits in horses' mouths. I know, because I used to raise quarter horses, and I know how you turn them left and right with a bare little nudge on that, on that rein, if you know what you're doing, and the horse knows what he's doing. But he said, that thing can light a fire that you can't get put out. I want you to know how to use your word, Psalm 81.10. God gave us for this decade. Open your mouth with a mighty decree. I will fulfill it. Now you'll see the words that you speak. So shall it be. So if you leave me your email right there in the comments, the information is right there on your screen. I'm going to send it to you. For all those of you in the greater Louisville, Kentucky Metroplex, I cannot wait to be with you 
tomorrow night, one night of revenant, resurrected, relevant, remnant, revolutionary revival. Tomorrow night, August 25th, 7 o'clock, I'll be with City Harvest Network Bishop Jeff Coleman in Maryville, Tennessee. I'm sorry, I said Louisville, didn't I? It's Maryville. Don't it show up in Louisville, I won't be there. I'll be in Maryville, Tennessee for revival in the foothills. Then this Saturday, August 27th, all you guys, my goodness, the hundreds that we had sign up just this past Sunday for nine o'clock this Saturday, guys and gravy. All take place in the Ministry Activity Center and then outdoors. We've got cornhole contests and championships. We got horseshoes and basketball and touch football, a great time. I'll have a little word for you. Guys, be a bringer. What an opportunity to bring a friend and just have a great time and let them see that we're all about family and fellowship and faith right here at the Harv. You'll also be entered to win a pit boss pellet grill and smoker combo. Look, they brought this thing out Sunday morning and I thought they needed an 18 wheel tractor to pull the thing out. It is enormous. I said, I don't know how much money we spent on that, but don't tell me because I want to keep my faith out there that it's already paid for. So you can sign up at whc.life slash gravy, whc.life slash gravy. This Sunday, August 28th, I am going to join all of our dream teamers, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you. We love you so much. Arrive at 830 because we've got our great rally, dream team rally once a month this Sunday, 30 a.m. Have some breakfast and uh, bring someone with you, someone that should be a dream teamer and hasn't found their way to serve yet. I'm bringing a powerful word then at 10 a.m. Pastor Chris Deegan, all of Harvest Music Live are back and we're going to be having a time in the Lord. Now this fall, beginning Sunday, September 11th, it's easy to remember. September 11th, 6 o'clock to a hard stop at 7.30. I just introduced all of this last Sunday morning and the response, and I'm, I'm hard to shock, but I can tell you when they gave me those numbers today, I just about fell out of my chair. Thank you for your response. Thank you that you want to go deeper and deeper and wider and broader in God's Word. There's something for every member of your family. We'll have three adult classes going on. Living in Victory is one of them. A study of the book of James and Ephesians. This is an eight-week course, an eight-week program. Then we're going to do Rooted Dominion Over Debt. I want you to know I have never seen such response now, I wrote this and I talked from it uh, just about a little over a year ago. And I have been told that uh, from a lot of folks that have gone through a lot of programs on how to get out of debt, that this is the finest they've ever been through. I know because I wrote it and I want to, it's not somebody else's that I borrowed. This is from the Spirit of God it's biblical economics along with what I have learned in 47 years of multi-million dollar businesses. All right? So I, I didn't make my money in the church. So I want, I want to share with you how you can get out of debt. Then we've got nursery for your preschoolers. And then we've got clubhouse program for your first through fifth graders. Then we've got Royal Rangers, that kind of Christian Boy Scout troop thing <laughs> for boys first grade through 12th grade. And then we've got girls troop, same thing for girls, 
first grade through fifth grade. Then we've got six, seven, eight. That's our ministry to middle schoolers, sixth through eighth grade boys and girls. And the next Harvest Youth is back. My God, the building about came off the place when I announced that Sunday morning. Ninth through twelfth grade young men and women. And uh, you can register right now. If you're anywhere near Columbus, get in here for family and faith nights on Sunday nights beginning September 11, 6 o'clock, hard stop, 7.30. We'll have food before and food after. We feed you around here. We didn't get looking like this just thinking about it, you know. We, we do it. Now, August 25th, First Chapel of Valor Christian College of the Semester, none other than the extraordinary Pastor Chris Deegan, and uh, we'll be bringing the message that day. Listen, Valor Christian College chapels are live every week on all social media platforms at rodparsley.com, as well as several television networks across the country. So just get in here. You're going to be blessed. Amen. I want you to hear uh, from a young man to let you know that the very next step you take is going to be one that brings destiny in your life. And then just as soon as this little 45 second powerful video is over, this seat will be filled by none other. And when we announce dominion over debt, I want you to know the place went wild. People want to get out of debt. He is the true general of biblical economics. He's here to share with you. I'm astounded, overwhelmed, grateful, humbled that he would be our guest tonight. So let everybody know as soon as this video is over, Dr. John Avanzini will be our special guest. I'm so excited to have him here. You're going to be changed forever tonight. God is not going to give you back what you put in. God is going to give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and run, 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 I just thank God for this opportunity, Dr. Rod Parsley, to let me sit in this place, in this great seat, and talk to you about the very subject that he's going to be bringing this series on. I want to talk to you, do, to you tonight about getting totally, completely out of debt. You know, the Bible begins uh, by telling us that who the Son sets free is free indeed. And in 1 Corinthians 7, 23, you're bought with a price, and it says, Be ye not servants of men. Do not become servants of men is the word that our Lord speaks to us. But now notice with me, please. It's so easy to let that get out away from you and become the servant of a man because the Bible tells us over in Proverbs 22, 6 and 7, it says, Train up a child in the way that he's old, uh, in the way you'd have him to go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Oh, that's a popular verse, but that's just half of what's being said. The other half is the rich rule, rule over the poor, and the borrower is the servant to the lender. Child of God, God does not want you to be anybody's servant. He wants you to be His servant. But let's start talking about a debt-canceling God. I know as you're watching, I don't know exactly how we're going to get to communicating together, but in my spirit, I'm feeling something. It's saying, my God is a debt-canceling God. 
I wonder if you can get that into your spirit tonight and just, just repeat it there, where, wherever you are. My God is a debt canceling God. And you know He's a debt canceling God. We'll come to it in a minute. But the biggest debt you ever, de- ever owed, He's already paid it. But let's start with small debt, just small debt. Think with me about a time. They're building onto the, the, the preaching uh, facilities on a riverside and a prophet is cutting wood and all of a sudden the ax head falls into the water. Well, an ax head in the water, that's nothing to get the preacher about, but something special about this ax head. Listen what it says in 2 Kings, the fifth verse, the uh, fifth chapter, the sixth chapter, excuse me, fifth through the seventh verse says, but as one was felling a beam, the ax head fell into the water and he cried and said, alas, master, it was borrowed. You wouldn't bother the man of God over an axe head falling in the water. But when the man of God heard that it was a borrowed axe head, immediately he came there and he began to ask questions. Where fell it? What's the place that it fell? And then of all things, the most, it's hard to grasp, but he takes a stick and throws a stick into the water and the axe head comes swimming to the surface. Listen to it. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he uh, showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither and the iron did swim. Think with me now. Here's something that's so ridiculous. My wife always said, if you're not willing to believe and to do the ridiculous, you will never see the miraculous. When that stick went into that water, something something out of this world happened. A person that was trapped, that young man was trapped It wasn't just an ax head, but it was a borrowed ax head. And when something's borrowed, your whole reputation, everything about you is on the line and you lose that wonderful thing of being long to nobody except the Lord Jesus. But when you're in debt, the Bible says you are the servant of the lender. And as long as you're the servant of the lender, you can't really be all that God wants you to be. Please know with me, so many of us that we'd like to do so much more for God so much more to reach the world. We'd love to be able to give in a a whole new dimension, but much of our finances are tied up with debt, credit card debt, uh, house payments, car payments, all kind of debts, uh, even television services that we're paying by the month on. And slowly, little by little here and there, all of your money gets away. Then it's time to reach out. And, and win a continent for the Lord or to reach a city that's never been reached. And there we have no finances in our hand. See, the devil wants you in debt, but God wants you out of debt. In, uh, in uh, Romans uh, 13, verse 8, in the NIV, it says, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continued debt of loving one another, for whosoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Child of God, it's God's desire that you not be in debt. And I know nothing much is said about this. I just thank God that that Pastor Rod is in the process of of teaching this to his people how to get out of debt. But most pastors don't want to disturb anything. But if you can just focus on the fact that your God cancels debt. There was a young man, just a small debt. And some of you say, well, my debt's so small. I really get it out of your life because debt is a spirit. It's contagious. It will draw you further and deeper into debt. More and more opportunities will start coming your way for credit. Please hear me. Even if it's a small debt, let God touch you. Please, I hope as you're listening that this is beginning to touch you because we're living in a tighter and tighter financial market today. Uh, We have inflation running at uh, flood levels, inflation running at flood levels, and the people of God the people of God are caught up in this same thing. Every day their money is worth less. Every day their money is worth less. And as it becomes less, what are you going to do? Uh, wages are not rising to keep up with it, but you can take and have a big new raise come in your life. Just one miracle debt cancellation can put hundreds of dollars into your hands to, infi- to, to live the life that God really wants you to live. Child of God, please hear me. There's debt cancellation for all the children of God that will just reach out for it. So many times it's just something we have to ask for. It's just something we have to ask God to have it happen in our life and it'll happen. I want to talk to you about another debt that took place. I'm talking now about 11th hour debt. 
debt that is to the point that it just almost looks like there's nothing can be done about it. It takes place in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, the first seven verses. Please, I hope you're following this because this is the kind of thing that will set you free. I tell you, I thought I was free for a long time in my life until I became debt free and there's no other feeling like it. I mean, you can sleep, you can sleep and, and literally through the night without any confusion. I remember the nights that I would be thinking, my goodness, the car payment's getting behind, the house payment's getting behind. But if you're debt free, it's such a beautiful feeling. But here's a woman that's got a major problem. Her sons are being carried away by the creditor. The Bible tells us in its 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. This is the preacher's wife uh, unto Elisha saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. And thou knowest that the servant did fear the Lord and the creditor is come to take him unto, hi unto him, my two sons for bondsmen. Those boys were going off to what would be known as the debtor's prison. They were going to now be working, trying to pay daddy's debt off. He's passed away, but she comes to the man of God. Let me say this. You don't need a loan organizer. You don't need some, uh, some outfit that you go and spend your money with trying to get out of debt. God will get you out of debt by miracles. He can take and heal by miracles. He can put marriages back together with miracles. He can take and bring uh, children that are lost and out in the world, bring them back home to you. That same God is just as concerned about your debt and he wants you debt free. Look a little further with me. Uh, she comes and Elisha says, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? Now, this thing has gotten bad. You talk about 11th hour debt. This thing has gotten tremendously bad because it's down to where all the woman's got left is a pot of oil. They've already auctioned everything in the house off. Think with me. She says, what, did, what do you have in the house? And she said, thine handmaid hath not a thing in thy house save a pot of oil. Then he said, go and borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Wait a minute, a miracle's getting ready to happen. He says, go borrow vessels, go borrow vessels. Well, you know, she's got a debt and that debt is a certain amount. And it takes so many vessels of this oil that he's gonna make a miracle with. It's gonna take so many vessels to pay for that debt. But God does not do that. He says, go get as many vessels as you want. Child of God, when God brings a miracle, it comes out of heaven as big as God. And we choke it down. We bring it down to the size that we can fit our faith. I think sometimes I'll ask people, I'll say, has anyone ever had a car note? And you couldn't pay the car note. And you called out to God, God, help me. I need this car payment. It's $180, I gotta have it. And God gets it to you. Here's my question. Why didn't you ask him to cancel the whole debt? If he can take care of $180, he can take care of the whole debt but we have a way of choking these miracles down when they come out of heaven. He tells this woman, go borrow vessels, go borrow not a few, get all the vessels you want, honey, cause this miracle is gonna be as big as you wanna make it. And it says, uh, borrow empty vessels, uh, empty vessels, borrow not a few, the fourth verse. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out of those vessels and set aside that which is full. So she went and did a court, uh, and so, so she went so she went from him and shut the door upon her and her sons. Watch what he told her. He said, when you do this, close the door. Don't leave the door open. Listen, when you're gonna get out of debt by a miracle, don't go tell all your neighbors. Don't tell all your relatives. They'll talk you out of it. Don't go until you have a pink slip from the car and you can say, look, my car, God helped me pay the car off. And by the way, I don't have any more credit card debt. Don't start out because they'll chide you They'll try to break your spirit. People want you in the same mess that they're in. But if you're getting out of debt, don't tell anybody until you have some scalps, until you have paid off the car, paid off the credit cards, paid off the refrigerator or whatever else you might have on time. So she clutch, shuts the door, pours the vessels. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Sixth verse, and it came to pass when the vessels were full, she said, unto the sons, bring me yet vessels. Do you, are you hearing this? Catch this. This woman knows a miracle is getting ready to happen and I'm going to make it as big as I can. There's no limit to how big it can be. Go get more vessels, get them. Say, mama, we got all the vessels. There aren't any more vessels anywhere around. She said, okay. Then she stops and she goes to the prophet. Seventh verse. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt. That's the end of it. No, no and live thou and thy children of the rest. She had a miracle coming to get out of debt, but she just leaned into it 
and leaned into it until it came forth enough for her to have a retirement policy too. I wonder if somebody can say, my God is a debt canceling God. Think about it, debt free, the car note out of your life, the, the refrigerator payment, whatever, all kind of thing, the, the, the water bed, whatever it is that you got on payments. Child of God, listen, it can be taken out of the way if you'll turn to God, Jehovah. He is a debt canceling God. Think it with me, say it with me. My God is a debt canceling God. Can you signal me? I think you send up little stars or something. Let me hear from you, little, little hearts. Let me know that you're hearing this thing because before this is over, there's going to be some people that are going in a whole new direction. Now hear this carefully. You will not get out of debt in one day, but there'll come a day that you know you're going to be debt free. And tonight there's hundreds of you, thousands of you around the world that are going to be thinking, my goodness, this, this, is it really, does God really get people out of debt? Time and time and time again, debts are paid off by God. He brings miracle debt cancellations. My son, and I just quickly just give you an illustration from him, uh, David, my youngest, he bought a pickup truck. Now he bought it on time. I, I don't want him buying it on time, but then I didn't want to buy it for him. So he's buying it on time and, he, and he's waiting and he comes in about two months. He said, Daddy, shouldn't I be getting my payment book? I said, well, honey, call them, see what they say. So he calls up there. He's telling me this story later. He says, I called and they sent me to this, this person and then I was waiting on the line to the next person. And then finally a voice came on, didn't even know who it was. Just a man's voice said, son, if I was you, I'd hang up the phone and just enjoy your truck. There's no record up here of you owing a penny on it. Oh, child of God, listen, if that computer can make a mistake in the bank's favor, it can make a mistake in your favor. Somebody say, my God is a debt canceling God. Listen, if he did it before, he'll do it again. And if he did it for anyone else, he'll do it for you. He's no respecter of persons. My goodness, I hope you're getting excited like I am. Somebody's getting out of debt. You say, well, wait a minute. I, I, I don't know if this is me. It might not be you, but somebody's getting out of debt. And why not you? Why not you just decide I'm going to get out of debt? And you watch what happens because as soon as, just like when I took the first steps towards the church that day with Lester Miller, after he had witnessed to me on the job for weeks and I walked in that front door, I left that night saved, born again. Child of God, listen, when you move towards God, heaven moves towards you. He's ready right now to work in your life. Listen, you know, Here's a terrible kind of debt. This is a nasty kind of debt. And my goodness, the government right now, they're getting 87,000 new tax collectors. God help us. But tax debt, tax debt is horrible debt. And many of you, and it's a, it's a shameful debt. Many times people won't even mention that they have it. Uh, but they'll be, they'll, it'll just be eating on them night and day. But our God, it cancels tax debt. Jesus had a tax debt one time. In Matthew 17, 24 through 27, uh, uh, it says, And when they were come to Capernaum, they that, received, they that received tribute money, tax money, came to Peter and said, Does not your master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him. Now, I think he was going into the house to Judas and get Judas to get the money out of the bag. But I know the Lord. He said, You know, come down one night in... Uh, Columbus, Ohio, there's going to be a preacher sitting there and he's going to be talking to people that have tax debt. Don't get it from Judas. Go out there and catch a fish. <laughs> this, is, this, is one of the, one of, this is one of the craziest things in the Bible. Watch what it says. He says, what, what uh, uh, preventeth him? What thinkst thou, Simon? Who, and he asked who, who, should be, who should be taxed and who shouldn't. And then he said, uh, notwithstanding, lest it should offend them, Go thou to the sea. I'm in the 27th verse. Go down to the sea and cast a hook. Now, wait a minute. Peter is a net fisherman. He's fished with a net all his life. And now all of a sudden he's going to go try to catch a fish with a hook. It seems silly to him to go catch one fish when you can get a net full of fish. But the Lord said, go catch a fish and use a hook. And what does he say? There's going to be something. And watch, this is, this is ridiculous. But if you're not willing to get involved in the ridiculous you're not going to get to experience the miraculous. Child of God, hear what he says here. He says, a cast in a hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. 
take and give to him and them for me and thee and pay the debt. Child of God, think with me just a minute. Here's this one. He says, you get the fish, but then you got to open his mouth. Please hear me. The fish has got the coin in his mouth, but you got to open his mouth. And many times the preacher, as he's preaching and teaching, and he's trying to get you to step into the abundance that God wants you to have. It's so hard to open the fish's mouth and get him to cough up the coin. But tonight, I'm telling you, there's a miracle took place. Miracle tax debt cancellation. And it can be on its way to your house any time that you have the faith to believe for it. God, that this thing is going to go some other way than the way that the government says it's going to go. And here comes the fish. It's got the coin in his mouth. He pays the debt and Jesus walks away. The debt is canceled. Can somebody say, my God is a debt canceling God. Listen, if he did it before, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He'll do it again. If he did it for anyone else, he's no respecter of persons. He'll do it for you. You say, oh my, I'm sitting over here at with some other country. You might be in another part of the world. Uh, way off from Columbus, Ohio. And you're thinking, my, I'm out here in this country where uh, it's kind of a poor country. But let me tell you, in the poorest of circumstances, God can bring wealth. God can bring finances into the poorest of places. That poor woman I read to you a little while ago for you, her sons were already in the, in the paddy wagon, headed off with the creditor. All that was left was a little pot of oil. And she turned to the man of God. And before nightfall, the debt was paid and the woman had a full retirement policy for the rest of her life. This is the kind of stuff that Christians get involved in when they have the faith just to step out and say, God, I'm tired of fighting this debt by myself. You're going to help me do it. And just think of it right now. One of those debts that you've got, $30, $50, $500, $700 a month, whatever it might be, bang, God cancels that debt. You've got that money in your hand. The whole inflation thing looks like, a, looks like a bad dream from yesterday as God would take you quickly, rapidly out of debt. Oh, think about it. Oh, now here's the one that's hard. Here's the hard one. Mortgage debt. Mortgage debt. Oh my golly. Everybody has a mortgage. No, no, everybody doesn't have a mortgage. I've had mortgages, but I don't have them anymore. And uh, well, God showed me how to break the spirit of debt. And when I broke the spirit of debt, I came out of debt. And like I said, you won't get out with debt in one day, but one day you'll know you're going to get out of debt. And this is a great day right now. This is a great day right now to make up your mind that I'm going out of debt and God's going to take me out step by step and every step of miracle, I'm coming out of debt. Watch this thing here. Mortgage debt. It takes place in Nehemiah, the fifth chapter. And it was a great cry of the people and of their wives. Wives, cry out about debt. I think back, my precious wife, she passed away a year ago last month. And uh, every time I'd come in with some paper to fill out, going to buy a boat or going to buy a motorcycle or whatever it was that I was going to buy on time. And she'd literally, she'd just walk ahead of me around the house, just all around the house, walk ahead of me. And I'm behind her with the paper, trying to get her to sign the paper. She said, I'm not signing that paper. I'm not signing it. And nobody would lend me any money if she didn't sign it. So many a time she saved my life just by, just by clamming up and saying, I will not sign. So wives, now don't get yourself in trouble, but you let your voice be heard about getting out of debt, that you don't want that family in debt. Because let me tell you, it's going to rob the kids. It's going to rob your vacations. It's going to take everything from you. It'll finally get to where you're selling things to try to pay payments. You got to break the spirit of debt because it's insatiable. It never stops eating. It never stops wanting more. You get a house almost paid for and then you got equity and you're going to buy another one and you're in twice the debt. Oh, child of God, hear me. God wants you debt free so that he can use you. Hey, mission trips, you can go on the mission trips. You can have the finances to feed. You know, and I, and I say this, I say this humbly. But when I first, when I was in debt, my five children and my wife and I, that's seven of us, I had to work all week to keep us fed. But this morning, when I ate breakfast here in Columbus, 250 little orphans in Managua, Nicaragua, ate breakfast with me through Feed the Hungry. For 10 years, Pat and I have been having kids, 250 kids every morning has breakfast with me. And it was a time I couldn't keep seven of us fed. 
what happened? We broke the power, the spirit of debt, and we now have the finances to not just be Christians, but to live like Christians, seeing that hungry were fed, naked were clothed, that there was a, that there was a portion for those that nothing was provided. But let's look at this debt now. And I, and I grew, and I, and there was a great cry. I'm going to put my glasses on. I don't tell them what I read to you if I don't have them on. That's why I use these big old sheets of paper so I can see it. And there was a great cry uh, of the people and their wives against the brethren, the Jews. And they went and said, we, we've, 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 our sons and our daughters are many. Therefore, we are up, uh, take up corn for them and, and that they eat might live. It's a little confusing right there what I read, but it picks up again the third verse. Some also there were that said, we have mortgaged our lands. Did you know what the word mortgage means? Did you ever stop to think what the word mortgage means? You see it, a friendly mortgage company, friendly mortgage, uh, uh, happy mortgage. The word mortgage means death, morgue, death, grip. When a, when a, when a, 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 a pipe fitter grabs that, cor- that pipe with the calibrators, he grips it with that death grip. There's a death grip on your house. There's a death grip on your car. What a foul thing to put the word happy in front of. Happy mortgage company. You happy death grip company. God does not want you in no death grip. Listen to what it says. He says, mortgage our lands, our vineyards, our houses, that we might buy corn because of the dirt. There were also that said, we borrowed money for the king's tribute. We've got tax money. We had to borrow for our taxes and that upon our lands and our vineyards. And I was very angry when I heard these words. Then I consulted with myself and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, you exact usury every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. Let me tell you what, as many people right now across this world that are watching, if you will just together in just one voice say, my God is a debt canceling God. It'll send a tremor through the corners of hell as they realize that some one of the handles that the devil has on God's children is getting ready to be broken. As you're going to come out of debt, I tell you, he takes people uh, hundreds, thousands over my life in the last 60 years of preaching miracle debt cancellation. Millions of people worldwide have come out of debt. Uh, James Payne, you know, James is so uh, regular with, with you. And James Payne came one day to my room and said, John, uh, Brother John, I want to get churches out of debt. And I laid my hands on him and I spoke out anointing into his life. And he told me the other day, 96 churches debt free. Churches that don't have a mortgage on them anymore. And it could be your house. It could be your car. It could be what, just what, a your school loan. Oh my goodness, you talk about hobbling a, a, a person before they ever start running. They start running with a load of bricks on their back, that school loan. God can move that out of your life. I know he can. Listen, if he could part the Red Sea, he could part the red ink. Come on, let's get with this. My God is a debt canceling God. When I hear comes the thing, hi, this is big business here, canceling mortgage debt. Now you're getting serious money here now, trillions of dollars. And how are you going to do that? And that's going to take something very big for that. Well, how did your debt, why did your uh, mortgage come in? It's just words. It's words. It's just, it's on a piece of paper. I mean, you could just, you could tear it right in half if you wanted to. It's just words. Listen, anything that comes in by words can go out by stronger words. And listen, watch it here. It says, he says, then I said to them, uh, the, let, me, let me get back. Pray I tell you, leave off this usury. I'm mean, in the 11th verse now. Restore, I pray to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, their houses, the hundred part of the money and the corn and the wine and the oil that you exact to them. Then said they, we will, re- we will restore them and require nothing will we do. So will we do as thou sayest. Child of God, the most powerful thing you've got right now in your arsenal is your voice. When you speak a thing and believe it, it'll come to pass. That little booklet that pastor was talking about, I'd get, that, I'd get my address right now to him to get that because that's going to show exactly how to take that voice of yours and not just sing little songs, but speak things that'll change everything in your life. It's what happened here. He spoke to the mortgages and the debtors, the the creditors, they canceled the debts. Somebody's got to be able to say, my God, 
My God is a debt canceling God. He cancels debt. Child of God, please grasp that. Take a hold of, hold of it. Listen, there's such a thing as being a debt free for life. Debt free for life. And this story is so well known. I'm just going to give it to you. Just kind of just hit the tops of it. It's found over in 1 Samuel 17. It's when David came down and David was, uh, uh, the boys was, uh, was getting ready for battle and Goliath, you know, was marching around and, and acting up. And, and so he's down there to watch the battle and all of a sudden Goliath jumps up in front of everybody and starts calling out for a champion. Everybody runs off. People would think that old David just stayed out there. David ran right off with them. And you get to the point there where it says, uh, uh, have you seen this giant? Yeah, yeah, he's awful. Yeah, you know that the, whoever kills that guy, they're going to get their, they're going to get their, be debt free for the rest of their life. They're going to marry the beautiful princess. Uh, and then David said, wait a minute, is there a reward? I didn't know there was a reward. Let's have another look at that guy. And then he, then the spirit of God rises up in him. Once you take and face, uh, see, hear me this. Your Goliath, people don't realize it, but David would have never been king if Goliath hadn't showed up that day. Goliath, your Goliath's the kingmaker. He wants to make you king. You just have to slay him, cut his head off, and you're moving up in this world. Watch me, please. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this no covenant Philistines that dares to come against a person with a covenant, a covenant with Jehovah God? And he steps out there and he takes that stone and he takes of all things, a little stone. And you say, what in the world can I do? Listen, a little rock in the hand of God knocked out that big giant and the word of God in your mouth. And you start speaking death to that mortgage and you speak death to that car payment and you speak death. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Use it on something that'll set you free. Start talking to your bills. My wife and I remember, I remember so well when we we had this mountain of debt. We didn't, it was like, we're going to have to declare bankruptcy. And then I said, look, let's try this. I laid the, de- the bills out on the table and I'd come in there and I'd, and I'd start talking to him. I'd say, credit card, you are going out of my life. And I talked to the other one and I talked to the mortgage and, and we'd come around, we'd, we'd together talk, look like two fools. We'd wait till the kids were asleep. But you know, if you're not willing to do the ridiculous, you don't get the miraculous. And we just kept on talking to those bills and then finally, one, and let me give you a little plan here. Just a little plan. How can you put a plan together to get out of debt? Take your bills and whatever you're paying on those bills, if you've got seven bills, add up what that amount is that you pay and do not really lower that. Keep that. Now let that be your, not your mortgage payment and your car payment and this, that is my bill payment and you keep paying it and keep paying it because all of a sudden one gets paid off. Don't take that money and put it back in the budget. Take that money and load it against the next one, load it against the next one. And pretty soon logarithmically, those bills start falling. Sometimes it'd be seven payments are made in one, one, one weekend. You make seven payments on something. And first thing you know, it's just the mortgage. And then you're making two payments or three payments a month in that mortgage. And that thing just goes out of your life. And then on top of that, miracle debt cancellation could take place. God's moving in miraculous ways to bring you totally, completely out of debt. Child of God, I could tell you experience after experience, family after family, they'll stop me in airports. They'll say, Brother John, and (laughs) and, and, and don't want to bother you. Of course, that's always the first word. Don't mean to bother you, but okay, what is it? We were in debt. We had car payments. We had house payments. We had student loan. And we started believing God to be out of it. And we started literally talking to the bills. And child of God, when you first start doing it, we waited till the kids were asleep. We were so, it seemed so silly to stand there talking to bills. But my words and Pat's word in agreement and the power of life and death that the Bible says is in those words. I mean, first thing you know, there was a debt paid. And then we had the ability to make two payments on the next one at a time. And one by one, they just started falling one after the other, one after the other. And this man, David, it said that for a lifetime, there would be no debt on his house. And David slew that giant that day. And child of God, let me say, it's your day. It's your day. It's time for you to slay that giant of debt. It's time to take him 
and bring him to his knees. Bring him to his knees. Bring him out of your life. Stop the whole thing. Please know this, that just as surely as you accepted Christ and he saved you, just as surely as you asked him to fill you with the Holy Ghost, and he did, just as surely as he brought back that child of yours that was trying to get into the world and you called him back with prayer, that same God, Jehovah God, he will reach out and start moving among your debts and start bringing forth miracle debts, miracle debt cancellations. Let me say this. It's, it's easier, it's easier for a bill to get paid than it is for a cancer to be cured, but he cures cancer. It's easier for a car note to be made than for a lost son to come back to the Lord, but they come back all the time and they come when we speak the right words. If you'll start speaking the right words, and listen, you can have, you can have an increase in your pay if you start speaking it. When's the last time you took your pay envelope and started talking to it and say, you're going to grow. You're getting bigger. You're going to be bigger. You're getting bigger. There's going to be more money. I'm going to have more money. And you say, how can it be? But you watch what I tell you. When a child of God, when a born again believer speaks, all of heaven comes to attention. And let me tell you, all of hell comes to attention because if you say things that's, 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 that they don't want to hear, it costs them everything. Oh, I hope I can just, I just hope I can, I can just put this into your spirit. Uh, think, think with me a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to this. I'm going to this. I was holding, I, 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 but, but I'm, but I'm going to come down to this right now. You, you have a miracle debt that was paid in full. You have a debt that was paid in full. Listen to it. Galatians 3, 13. Christ paid the price. Uh, this is from the uh, God's Word translation. God paid the price to free us from the curse of God's law, bringing by, uh, bringing by becoming I'm going to put my glasses on. But bringing by becoming cursed instead of us. Scripture says, everyone who is hung on a tree is cursed. Christ paid the price so that the blessings promised to Abraham would come all, all, on, on, to all the people of the world through Jesus Christ and he would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Child of God, think of this. Your, your, your sin debt, your sin debt, that thing that was hanging over you. I remember as a lost man, how it just, I knew I was lost. I, I, people would, I knew how to sing the songs. I, I knew how the answers to this, for by grace are you saved through faith, but I was lost. I was lost. But one night when Lester Miller, bricklayer, I grew up a bricklayer, Lester Miller come on to work and he started talking to me about Jesus, telling me that Jesus loved me. I knew Jesus loved me. Uh, telling me that Jesus died for my sins. Well, from a little boy, my mama told me Jesus died for my sins, but I just didn't make that step. But oh my goodness, that night, that night at First Baptist Church, Largo, Florida, I was sitting there just uh, maybe three rows back and there comes just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. And they must've sung it 15 times. I mean, they sung it until I sinner sitting there. I knew how to sing the song. I knew every word of it. And I finally stepped forward and I tell you like a lift, like a, like a load of bricks was lifted off my back with just the words of my mouth, a person that was going to hell now was going to heaven. Just the words of my mouth. And with the words of your mouth, you can start speaking against debt. You know, the Bible tells us in the 10th chapter, of the book of Acts. It tells us about Cornelius. And you can read that as simple. It's right in the first part of but the first four or five verses, seven verses. It tells about uh, Cornelius wanting to have a visit from someone to tell him about God. He knew he loved the Lord, he, but he was, a, he was a Roman centurion. He was a heathen. And he, w- and he knew the Jews wouldn't have anything to do with the Gentiles, so he really couldn't get in counsel with anyone. And he just called out to God and said, God, send me somebody. And you know what the Lord said? He said, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. A memorial. So really, when praying and giving are mixed together, God says it becomes a memorial. 
it stands as a memorial before him, reminding him. And at the same time, Simon Peter was down in Joppa on the rooftop and he got hungry and all of a sudden a sheet comes down and all kind of foul creatures are in that sheet. And the Lord says, eat. And he said, no, I'm not eating that. I don't eat anything unclean. And then the Lord said to him, what I've said is clean, is now clean. And, you, you, and then at that time, here comes people up the steps to the rooftop. There were people that had come from Cornelius' house and were asking Peter to come. And Peter follows them. A, gen, a Jew now is going into a Gentile's house. I mean, talk about breaking protocol. Protocol is getting ready to be broken. And as he comes in, Cornelius is able to ask the questions and Cornelius is saved, his house is saved, and they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. What I'm trying to say to you is this. There's a way that you can move God's hand right into your debt where you can pull him right, he pull it right into the room with you. And it's called memorial prayer. It's simply making an offering and planting a seed with that offering and stating with that, I want to be debt free. This is a debt free seed that I'm planting. My God is a debt canceling God and I'm going to plant a debt free seed. I want to be out of debt. Now we give offerings from time to time, but you know, specificity is so important with when you, when you give that you specify what you'd like to have. I know for many years I gave, but I kind of gave figuring I could do without it. I could live without it. And then I found out that if I just had some expectation, if I had expectation, my, 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 my offering would not only reach out and do something for others, but it would reach back and do 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold for me. So I started expecting. When I gave, I started expecting. And that same thing can happen this very moment as you and I are together in this very private moment. And you say private. I mean, there's the whole world's listen. Listen, when you get together with God, everybody has that little private place where they meet with him. And right now we're in that place with you. And you can just say, Lord, I want to be debt free. I want this debt out of my life. Mama, get daddy, get daddy over by you. Get him, get him, up, get him over there by you. Uh, daddy, get mama over. Get, get, gather up there and just listen a minute. This is a moment that you can take and change everything. Can you imagine being totally debt free? Well, just imagine when you were lost in the world and all of a sudden you're trying to imagine being without sin, being, a, being, a, being, being born again. And like that, it takes place. God will start moving in your debt. He'll start moving in your debt. But it's not just a wish, but you're solidifying it now. Tonight, you're going to make an offering. And, and it's, it's a normal thing. We've had ministry for an offering, but I want this to go beyond just meeting a need for the ministry. I want this to go into meeting a need for you. I want this to be a time when you and the Lord and myself together will cut together in covenant and you're going to make a memorial prayer. You're going to take a, something that's significant. You're going to take an amount that's significant to you because being debt free is a significant thing. And as you now reach out to God and we're going to do it together, I'm going to form a prayer with you in a moment. And as we form that prayer, you're going to take and feel uh, and you say, can you say I'm going to feel something? I, I'm going to say it. You're going to feel a relief come over you. You're going to feel like something is happening. Just like I remember uh, sometimes whenever I would be at, at, out in the ocean with a boat and all of a sudden a wave would make the boat and the boat would just kind of surge. The motor wasn't on or anything, but it surged forward. And it was a force that was beyond the motor. And that kind of a force is going to come in your life tonight. Tonight you're going to have a total transformation in your thinking. You're not going to be thinking like a person burdened by debt, but you're going to be a person coming out of debt. Now remember what I said, you won't get out of debt in one day, but this day you can know that you're going to be totally debt free and God will do it. He'll bring you out of it. He's done it for others. He's no respecter of persons. He'll do it for you. Are you catching what I'm saying? He'll do it for you. If he's done it for anyone else, he'll do it for you. So right now, if you can just all over the world, wherever you are, if you're alone, if you're sitting in a car, if you're somewhere just looking at a set, as even as pastor said earlier, if you're looking at this at another time, that anointing's still there. You know how that is? This thing was, these things were spoken thousands of years ago, but they're as powerful today as they ever were. Because once the word of God goes out, the word of God, 
is mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. It'll bring this debt into control in your life. So now, I don't know what's the amount you want to give. Uh, make it significant. Now, I don't, you, you know exactly how you have to reach into the buttons you push, the different things that you, the, 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 the moves that you have to make to, to do the, to do the uh, uh, offering. But I want you to make that offering tonight and I want it to be a seed to be totally, completely debt free. Now, there's just a few minutes left. And I, 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 I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to beg you because this is something you, you should be begging about that this debt could be out of your life, but it can be. I promise you this, person after person, from small debt, just like you saw, a little ax head down in the bottom of a river. And who would want to preach you? Going to bring the pastor down here to see about an a, a, a ax head on the bottom of the river. But the, the word, it's borrowed. All of a sudden, the man of God knows this thing's got a grip. It's got, it's, it, it, it has a grip on this man and it's a spirit and he throws a stick in and it comes swimming to the surface. Can you, who would ever, I mean, there's no book in the world would even start to write that way, but God, he does these marvelous, wondrous things. Ax head swimming <laughs> to the surface. Think about it. You say, well, boy, that's ridiculous. Remember, if you're not willing to do the ridiculous, you will not see the miraculous. Think of it. It's time right now. If you'll make that offering right now, you know how to do it. You just reach out and do that. And I'm going to pray this prayer with you just another minute or two. I want to pray this prayer with you and we're going to see something start happening. And I'm going to pray that somewhere there's a spark, just a spark, some miracle that takes place immediately ruffling through your bills. Something changes in your income. Your income goes up something happens that you start realizing something, something miraculous is working in my finances. It just looks every day, nine and 10, and it's really, it's more than 10% inflation that your money's shrinking. But all of a sudden, the hand of God is in your money. The hand of God is among your bills and things are changing. So right now, I want to pray that prayer with you. I'm going to pray it with you. Please be ready with your seed, your bank of seed, you're planting a seed, a memorial prayer that you're going to be totally debt free, that God's going to start at step by step and every step a miracle, you're coming out of debt. Lord, I thank you that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost moves across the earth. It sweeps from nation to nation, to place to place where this broadcast goes. It goes into the living room with mom and dad right now. It goes with that young, young college student that's facing debt. That, 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 that farmer that has problems with his, with his finances there, they can't get enough for his product to pay for the material and the things he has to have. I speak of explosive miracle takes place in his life. In all of those people's lives that are trusting you, that are wrapping their gift today, their offering today, they're wrapping it in faith and saying, I'm not just giving to meet a need. I am giving, expecting, expecting, to receive back broken debt, debt out of my life, clear freedom from this curse of debt. And I speak it's done in the powerful name of Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, child of God, I hope you understand. Your God is a debt canceling God. He's a debt canceling God. He loves to cancel debt. Think about it. When he canceled your sin debt, when he canceled your sickness debt, I heard that, I remember when I heard that Pastor Rod had this terrible thing attack his throat. I thought, my goodness, what's going to happen? We need this voice. And the miracle debt cancellation took place as that cancer was dried up and gone out of his body. God cancels debt, sin debt. He cancels sickness debt. He cancels all, he puts broken marriages back together. Our God is a debt canceling God. Thank you for your time. And listen, do not give up on this. Keep speaking the word. It will change everything in your finances. God bless you. Good night. Your text messaging app and send a message to the number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space, WHC. 
If it's your first time giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus, enter your giving method, and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you are already registered, the process is just the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space, WHC. You'll receive your receipt immediately. If you prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed. Pass away. Oh. 
Come on, ask him right where you are. Come and flood your heart. 